The lush fields of Queensland's most northern food bowl are picturesque. Its rich red volcanic soil, productive, but a destructive enemy is lurking. I've been farming all my life, never seen something so vicious. And it's down at the Burdekin, it's down at there in the sweet corn area, it's as far as New South Wales, it's a bow desert, it's even reached the Victorian border now. It's been just over a year since fall armyworms flew into Australia. Capable of travelling hundreds of kilometres a day, the exotic moth's larvae have devastated crops across the Americas and Asia. It's now spread to New South Wales, the Northern Territory and Victoria. But it is here on the Atherton Tablelands, one of the first places it arrived on Australian shores, that offers a glimpse of what could be to come for other parts of the country. Every paddock is infected with this grub. Every paddock on the table. There's not one paddock that hasn't got it. It's really bad. When you see this, this'll this will open your eyes, this one. It's it's pretty embarrassing actually. It's not good at all. Let's take a look. We'll take a Jeff look. Reason is one of the dozens of farmers in the area battling to destroy the caterpillars, that's, that's the spending that's thousands of dollars each week on chemicals to no avail. There you go. There we go. There's more there. He, oh, mate, wow. he, he's, he's doing well, that fella. No. You see, check this out. He's a the once healthy crops devoured by the hungry caterpillars. Oh, gosh. Look at the damage. Yeah, wow. Now this, it's this... Just, it's disintegrating, isn't it? It is. It was sort of grass he feels powerless moment. against this seething this army. This is pretty bad. See, I don't even know whether I should walk away from some of these paddocks because the amount of sprays I'm spraying, the cost is just, just getting away. He's not the only one that's fighting to save his maize crop. Next door, Bob Lloyd is in a similar predicament. There he is there, but he'll eat that centre out of this plant. Mm. Instead of spraying it once, I've already sprayed it three times. So, but the poisons are, are expensive too, and time and everything. And the weather's got to be with us to spray. We can't spray in the rain. It's not just farmers under strain. Those who work closely with them, like crop duster Hamish Jacob, also feel helpless. Chemicals are barely making an impact on the thousands of caterpillars feasting below and we don't have the chemistry to deal with it. We're all environmentalists at heart, the farmers, everyone cares about the environment and that sort of thing, and we don't want to be using chemicals unnecessarily, but that's what's happening at the moment. Sweeping low over paddocks time and time again, he feels like he's losing the fight against the fall army worm. It's hard knowing that I still have to charge for what I do. I'm providing the service they need, but it, it, it just takes the shine off it really, like to be taking money for some, from someone that is not really going to see anything at the end of it, and that's why we're all here. The farmers have even coined a new name for the situation they've suddenly found themselves in. They're calling it the green drought. They've stuck all that money in the ground and they need it to go to fruit so that they can, you know, get their money back. And the way it's looking at the moment, I, I, I can't see how anyone's going to make it, any money out of a corn crop this year. Many farmers told Landline they were on the verge of walking away from it all. Others have already begun ploughing in their corn fields. It's a situation that has the beef and dairy industries very worried. Ray Graham runs Queensland's largest dairy near Miller Miller in far north Queensland. The fourth generation farmer believes there's never been a greater threat to Australia's agricultural industry. It's almost a coronavirus for agriculture, to be honest. Is we need some research and we need some money thrown at this quickly. His 900 cattle eat thousands of tonnes of corn each year to supply milk for supermarket shelves. He says if farmers can't supply the crops he needs, he'll be forced to send 250 of his finest to the meatworks. We don't have any alternative but to cut numbers because we've got to feed the cattle. We're just so reliant on the corn industry um, for dairying and we don't have an alternative. There isn't a fallback situation. 
Local agronomist Paul Keevers says the impact of the fall armyworm will be wide-reaching as their invasion spreads. They will attack all sorts of crops and we grow just 60 different crops on the tablelands. So we're pretty confident, unfortunately, that it's going to attack most of those. And um, the implications for the supply chain, especially for the food market, um, can be pretty devastating. So, you know, the costs are going to rise. But there is hope. Researchers are testing the efficacy of a virus used widely overseas, which Australian authorities have agreed to allow into the country. And this naturally occurring fungus, which eats the grub from the inside out, is also showing promise. So we know that a high concentration will kill them all. Dr Ian Newton from Queensland's Department of Agriculture has been growing the Nomurea rileyi fungus at a laboratory at Mariba in the far north. It's a native organism, so we don't have to sort of jump through the hoops of proving that we're not bringing in a foreign organism that will be detrimental. It's unlikely to be available commercially for some time. They still have to prove that it works, prove that it's effective against fall armyworm, you still have to then, I guess, work out a way to manufacture it. It's hydro. And there are no guarantees. It's not going to be a silver bullet, but these biological options certainly, I think, can be good tools. And look right through. It's just... It's like a fire's gone through. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. But it's not over. But it's worth the battle. One lady said to me, we've got to go down fighting, so I suppose we've got to give it a go. That's all we can do, I suppose, at this stage. Okay, can I show you something here? Oh, There's the eggs. There's the eggs. All right. right. 